A, a man's son is none different from him. So he arranged that the son of Pratimurudwaj would come to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was a young boy, but his complexion was very dark, shamkala. And the king had dressed him with peacock feather, pitamba, hmm, everything, like Krishna. So naturally, when they brought the boy in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what happened? Mahaprabhu became absorbed in Bhav, and he embraced the boy. At once the boy fell to the ground weeping, chanting, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hmm? And then the boy returned home to his father. Then Pratapurudu Maharaj embraced that boy. Hmm? And feeling the embrace of that boy, oh, then he was also inundated with ecstatic symptoms. Hmm? This is called Parampara. Hmm? How the mercy of Mahaprabhu comes from, to his associate, to another associate, like this, one by one, by association. Hmm? So, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he wrote, Surupam Bibrano Jagatlama Dueta Dieta, Propanna Srivaso Janita Paramananda Garima, Hare Dino Dari Gajapati Kripotse Katarala, Satchitanya Kimme Purana Pitisho Yasit Vedam. He's using here the Viroda Bas Alankar. Hmm? It means the figure of speech, which is the, called the reverse metaphor. Reverse metaphor. Why? Mapu is Hari. And Pratapurud Maharaj is Gajapati. King of Orissa is called Gajapati because he had an army of so many elephants. So Hari also means lion. And Gajapati means the king of elephants. So the lion is always very eager to jump on the head of the elephant and inflict, inflict cruelty upon him. But, hmm, Sri Chaitanya Mahapu said that this lion was trembling with anticipation to inflict what? Oh, to shower his mercy upon this elephant. So, in very beautiful poetry, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, sorry, Rupa Goswami has expressed Mahaprabhu's internal anxiety. When can I give my mercy to Pratapurudra Maharaj? So, Savabhavan Bhattacharya, he instructed Pratapurudra Maharaj at the time of Ratyatra festival, when Mahaprabhu is taking rest in Aitot, you should go there. So, he went there, giving up his royal dress, and in simple cloth, he came and massaged the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and began to utter the verses of Gopi Git. And when Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Oh Burida, Burida, you are the most merciful uh, donor. You are the most kind and generous uh, and altruist because you have given me the most valuable things for nothing. What valuable things? Tavat katam ritam tapta jivanam the nectar emanating from the hearts of gopis of Vrindavan at the time of their separation from Sri Krishna. Hmm? So Mahapu sat up and told him, Tumi mare dili bahu amula ratan ami kichudite nai kare alingan You have given me so many valuable things, but I have nothing to give you in return. So what can I, I am a beggar. I have nothing to give in return. So I will simply embrace you. And when Mahapu embraced Patapurta Maharaj, then his mercy appeared in his heart and Gopi's mood manifested there. All the meanings of the verses of this Gopi Git. So, Pratapurdu Maharaj, he was a very great personality. Whenever he would stay here in Puri, when he would stay here, every day without fail, he would do one seva. What was that? He would walk from here to the Gambira and he would meet with Kashimisa, who was his guru. And every day he would massage the lotus feet of Kashi Misra. Hmm? So one day, while he was massaging the lotus feet, they had a conversation. Hmm? Kashi Misra said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very upset. Why? Because it happened that, you know, Bhavananda Rai, he lives in that Bentapur. You went there the other day when you went to Alanath, the house of Bhavananda Rai. Bhavananda Rai, Mahapu said, you are like Pandu because you have five sons who are like the Pandavas. So his five sons, Ramananda Rai, hmm? Bhaninath, Gopinath and others, hmm? they were very great devotees. So one of the devotee, one of the sons of Bhavananda Rai, his name was Gopinath Patanayak. And Gopinath Patanayak, he's his behavior was not so exemplary. He was a tax collector and he would collect revenue on behalf of the government and then he would spend it on just enjoying and going to see mm, 
dancing girls and other things. So he was uh, he he was not giving this the revenue from the government to the to the government. So when Pratapurta Maharaj found out, he told his son, "Oh, you should get the revenue from him." So the son of the um, Pratapurta Maharaj, that is, his name was Pur Purushottam Jana also, the prince. The prince went to see Gopinath Patanayak, and he said, "You you owe two lakhs of the currency at that time, two lakhs." So you should give it. He said, I don't have that kind of money with me right now. So, but I've got 10 horses, very good horses. They're very valuable. You should take these horses. You calculate how much they're worth. Take these horses and whatever's left over, I'll pay you later. So then the prince, he was very expert in calculating the price of horses. But he gave a price to Gopinath Patanayak, which was well, well below those horses. So when he said, okay, we'll give you this much for the horses, then Gopinath Patanayak was very much dismayed and he became angry. So he was a little arrogant and sarcastic. So he said to the prince, we should know that the prince, Purushottam Jan, he had one peculiar idiosyncrasy in his behavior. That he used to go like this. He used to look up at the sky and move his head from side to side. This was his habit, he'd go like this. So then Gopinath Patanayak said to the prince, he said, look, my horses don't go like this. Hmm? So you should give the right price to them, for them. So then the prince became really angry. He said, okay, I've had enough. And he called the guards. They take him and bring him here. So then the guards took him and they brought him to a public place. And they had one contraption called the changa. So this changa was a raised platform and swords, erect swords were in the ground at the bottom. And the criminal would be brought onto the changa and then he would be thrown off and he would fall on the swords. They would go straight through him and kill him. Mm -hmm. So the prince was really angry. And he took Gopinath Patanayak with the soldiers and they brought him up onto, onto the Changa. So in the meantime, then all the devotees became afraid. And one of the servants of Gopinath Patanayak came running to Kashimish Bhavan, where Mahaprabhu was staying in the Gambira, and said, Oh Mahaprabhu, please help, please help. The son of the king has taken Gopinath Patanayak up onto the Changa. He's about to kill him. Hmm? Mahaprabhu said, why? He said, because he was taking the revenue from the government and spending it himself and not giving it to the government. Mahaprabhu said, so what's the problem? If someone steals the government revenue, the revenue of the government is more valuable than the property of a Brahmin. Hmm? So if he's going to, they're going to punish him like this, then what's the problem? This is a fit punishment. So then that person went away. Hmm? So then another person came. Hmm? And Kashimishu came. Even Swarup Damada came. Hmm? And they're all begging, please, do something. Hmm? Mahapu said, what, well, what do you want me to do? He has a, a debt of two lakhs to the king. Do you want me to go with my Uttariya and go to the king and beg him for two lakhs on behalf of Gopinath Patanayak? Is this the fit duty of a sannyasi? Hmm? I am not going to do anything. Hmm? So Mahaprabhu, it said that a great Vaishnav, Mahabhagat, and Mahaprabhu is playing the role of a devotee. Sometimes they are as soft as a rose, and sometimes they are as hard as a thunderbolt. So Mahaprabhu became hard as a thunderbolt, and he did not want to be involved. So when Mahaprabhu refused to be involved, then Harichandan was there, and he went quickly, and he went to the king, and said, Oh, Pratapurta Maharaj, the son of Bhavananda Rai, your son is taking him up on the Changa and he's going to put him to death because he will not pay the, the re government revenue. Pratapurta Maharaj said, Oh, this is not right. If we kill him, then we'll never get the money back. <laughs> hmm? And anyway, this is not a fit, puni fit punishment that he should, he should be killed. He's the son of my friend Bhavananda Rai. So you tell him we should stop this. So some messengers came and told the, the prince, Oh, your father said you should not kill him. So then he was brought down from the Changa. And one day Mahaprabhu told the devotees, I can't stay here in Pur anymore. I can't do bhajan here because there are too many disturbances. He told Swarup Damada, You're the fourth person today who came to me eh, to get me involved in all of these materialist activities. Hmm? Sanyasi should not be involved in materialist ac activities. So when Kashimisha heard this, hmm, one day, shortly afterwards, Pratapurta Maharaj from here went to the Gambira and was massaging the feet of Kashimisha. 
And Kashi Mishra told him, O oh Maharaj, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants to leave Puri because there are so many disturbances. So then the king, he thought about this and he went away and he, he called the Gopinath Patanayak and he reinstated him in his post as the tax collector in one village and he doubled his salary and also honored him by giving some royal silk cloth and gave him so much honor. So then when Kashi Mishra told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu what happened, then Mahaprabhu was very upset. He said, Kashi Mishra, what have you done? Hmm? What have you done? Prataparudu Maharaj, uh, because of me, now he's forgiven this person, given him his post back, doubled his salary and given so many things. Hmm? So now I've become involved in this materialistic plot. This is very, very bad. So Prataparudu Maharaj, he told Kashi Mishra, tell Mahaprabhu not to leave Puri. I never gave this position to Gopinath Patanayak and doubled his salary and forgave him of the debt because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I did it because I have a very, very close love and affection, close friendship with Bhavananda Rai. It was not because of Mahaprabhu. So then Kashi Mishra told Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu became relieved and he decided that he would stay here in Puri and not leave the devotees. So just then when Mahaprabhu became happy and decided not to leave, then Bhavananda Rai came to Kashi Mishra Bhavan. We're going there next. He came with his five, all five sons and they all fell at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he told Gopinath Patanak, don't take the money of the government again and spend it on all nonsense. And Gopinath Patanayak, he said, you are so merciful, you are so merciful to me. At that time, when the son of the king, the prince, he took me and put me on the changa and they were about to throw me on the knives. At that time I folded my hands and I prayed and I remembered your lotus feet. And simply by praying and remembering your lotus feet, I was saved from death, reinstated in my post, honored by the king of the country and my salary was doubled. So you are so very kind. So, but then Gopinath Patanayak, he said, but I think really these things are not your mercy. You have not given your real mercy to me. Why? You've given your mercy to my brothers, Ramananda Rai and Bhaninath, because they have completely renounced everything in this world and they're fully devoted to you. So please give me that mercy. But Mahaprabhu told him, no, you go on doing your duties, but don't misbehave again. So in this way we see how Mahaprabhu so calls us the merciful. Ramananda Rai, Sorry, the Sri Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami, he explained that when all the devotees were coming to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and begging for mercy on behalf of Gopinath Patanayak, at that time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no intention whatsoever of helping him. He had no intention of helping him. Yet what happened? When he was standing on the changa and about to be thrown on the swords, then Gopinath Patanak, he just remembered the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and was saved from death and honored and so many facilities came his way. So Krishna Skaraj Goswami gives this conclusion that even if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't want to give you mercy, even then, even if you remember him, how you'll be saved from the greatest danger and all those Krishnas will come into your life. Hmm? So by Kaimutik Nyai, by Kaimutik Nyai, some glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even if he doesn't want to give you mercy, anyway still you remember him. Hmm? And what will happen? It, so, for those to whom Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does want to give mercy, then what will happen to them? Oh, we cannot imagine. So, by Kaimotik Nyai, Krishna's Karaj Goswami has glorified the Ahotati Ki Kripa of Satinanda and Gohari. Sri hmm? Patavruta Maharaj Ki Jai, Satinanda and Gohari Ki Jai. Sri Rasik Rai Ki Jai, Sri Radha Kanta Ju Ki Jai, Sri Sigur Nittanan Bhu Ki Jai, Sri Pataparudha Maharaj Ki Jai, Sri Indra Dumna Maharaj Ki Jai, Sri Neil Madhava Ki Jai, Nithai Gaur Premanande! This temple was in a dilapidated state and our Godmother Mr. Sanganya, she 
Puja Pad, Sri Bhagavad Gita Prabhu, he gave so much, so many donations to restore this place and uh, bring it to the glory that we see it now. So, Bhagavad Gita Prabhu ki jai. This is the big one. Chagan, 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. How do I get one of those? I want to uh, every day take a changing flag. Oh, you're the one. What's that? <coughs> he changed the Juggernaut's flag. This is the Mahaprabhu's flag from Juggernaut. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You just go there. Okay? All the way to the end. That's how big Come, come. Well, come. You're in the middle. Hold it. hold it in the middle. I gotta hold it. Okay. Double G. Touch. Okay, go. Go, go. go, go. We just got Juggernaut's flag donated. Wow. The top one. Whoa, big one. Hey, other way, turn it the other way. Take a picture. Turn the other way. Take a picture. Other way, other way. Other way, other way. Thank you. 
बाहर में बीस की भांति जाला जलन होता है और भीतर आनंद से भरपूर है संसार के नाम शिष्टम मनमति अशुचिपुत्रमत्ता स्वरूपम रूपम तस्गजापुरी मातुरी गोष्ठवाति राधा कुंद मगेबर अहो राधिका माधवासम भक्त पति कृपया श्री गुरु तमस्मी By the course of Master Shri Guru and Goranga, now we have come to this place, Sri Gambira, Kashi Mishra Bhavan. This place is very, very important <coughs> to all Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It was in this place that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the company of Sri Royalananda and Sri Damodar, was weeping, and he explained, "Ki rupa nam lele, prema upajai, thalakshan slokshano saruprarai." What is the way to take Hari Nam? Whereby? Prem will be awakened in the heart. Oh, Swarup Ram Rai, please listen. Then Mahaprabhu uttered, "Shikshastakam." So Shikshastakam was spoken here by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this Shikshastakam, he has given the whole process of Nam Bhajan from the beginning to it, the never-ending, never-ending end. Everything from the stages of Shraddha, Anatha Nivriti, Nista, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhav, Prem, and up to Mahabhav, even in these verses, it was manifested here. Perhaps many of you have read the Jaya Dharma of Shri Bhakti Nath Thakur. There we see that Brajana and Vijay Kumar they would come here every day. And receive instructions about bhakti tattva, sadhan bhajan from Gopal Guru Goswami. Where did it take place? Oh, all here. Jaya Dharma spoken here. Most of the second part. So this place is very significant to Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It was here that the Supreme Lord fulfilled his innermost heart's desire. Shila Rupa Goswami Pada wrote, Sureshanam Durgam Gati Atishayana Panishadam Muninam Sarvasam Parata Patalinam Madurima Vinirayasha Premno Nikhil Pashupalam Bujadrisham Sachaitanya Kimme Punar Pitisho Yasati Padam Rupa Goswami Pai He expressed the astonishing news that Suresha Namdurgam that objective of life who is very very difficult to attain even for the great demigods Atishaya Upanishadam who has been only hinted at in the crest jewel of all the Vedas, the Upanishads. That person to whose lotus feet all the great sages of the universe, hmm? Narad, Shukadeva Goswami, Mahadev, all, they fall and bow down to his feet again and again. That person hmm, has appeared to Try to understand the emotions in the heart, Pashupalam Bujadrisham, of the daughters of the dairy farmers of Braj, who have very beautiful lotus eyes, who is very difficult to understand. 
and attain through study of the Vedas by all great sages and demigods. That very person, he came here and he wants to know how do the cowherd girls of Vrindavan feel? What is their love for me? Especially Shimati Radhika. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he did kirtan everywhere. Hmm? But in his final pastimes, he retired to this place and privately, not in front of everyone, he entered deeply into this Rasakata. So he set an example. If we want to deeply enter into Braja Prem, then in the association of Sajatiya, like minded persons, then we have to hear Harikata day and night. Mahapu himself gave the example. Apini karimu bhakta bhava yang nikari, apini achari bhakti shikamu sabari. Krishna thought, I will appear in the mood of a devotee and I will teach everyone the path of devotional service by my own example. So the example that Chaitanya Mahapu set in his life is ideal, exemplary. It is for, to be followed. We know that Sri Krishna he is the Adhisthati Devata of Samvit Shakti, the knowledge potency. Hmm? He knows, he is omniscient. He knows everything. But what is it that he cannot know? How Radhika feels. What is the nature of her praying? Even this cannot be known by Sri Krishna. So how profound. Hmm? We cannot imagine. Yet in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came to realize this. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kiddusho Vanayaiva What is this Pranaya of Radhika that controls me? Radhika Prema Guru Ami Sisyanat Ami Sadhanana Nityai Nacha Udbhat The love of Radhika is my Guru. Just as to the disciple, the Guru's heart is so profound and unfathomable. So the heart of Radhika is profound and unfathomable for, to Sri Krishna and it causes him to dance newer and newer dances hmm? in separation from Radhika Krishna his weeping he has spurti of Radhika here there here and there and chases after her spurti hmm? but she disappears so Krishna thinks what is this frame of Radhika that overpowers me and controls me I don't know and a prema dwarenita radika e kali amara madhurya amrita ashwada sakali only radika through that prem is able to taste my sweetness how sweet am i through the eyes of radika i don't know hmm? when krishna performed his pastimes here after he wound them up and he returned to Goloka Vrindavan. And Krishna was sitting and remembering those pastimes that he performed. How in the morning time he used to go for cow grazing. Hmm? At that time, gopis hiding in various hiding places from behind pillars, through windows, from the roofs of their houses, from behind trees. They look at Krishna and tell each other, Aksham Falam Paramedamna Paramedama. Sakya Braje Pashun Aduni Vivesha Tor Vayasya Vaktam Braje Shasutayor Anuve Nujustam Yavani Pita Manorakta Kataksham Aksham O Saki, for those who have eyes, the only fruit of having eyes is to see Krishna. Mm -hmm. How he's entering into the forest in the morning and glancing lovingly. Mm -hmm. So Krishna was remembering how he used to go in the, into the forest. But how was it that they used to see him? He does not know. He remembered. Hmm? Gopis at the time of Raslila when he disappeared, they said, Atityad Bhavan Anikanana Truti Ugayate Twamapasyatam Kutila Kuntala Shimukam Chate Jataya Dikshata Pakshna Kritisham 
Krishna saw from a hiding place how gopis were weeping and saying, Hey Krishna Chandra, during the day when you go to the forest, at that time, one moment seems like thousands of years. And in the evening when you return, we look at you, but we cannot see you. Why? Your beautiful curling hair falls over your face. It makes an obstacle. Then you take your hand and you move your hand, tuck it into your turban. And then we look upon your face. But then what happens? Our eyes blink. Hmm? And at that time, we give a curse to Brahma. Why did you make eyelids? Hmm? What is this? Gopis of Vrindavan are very, very humble. They give respect to all demigods. They worship Lord Shiva. They worship Surya Dev. They give honor to demigods. So how is it that they can give curse to Brahma? Condemn him? This means that the intensity of the anurag to see Krishna for a moment. How intense? Krishna cannot imagine. So being in Galoka Vrindavan, he was remembering all his pastimes. Hmm? Krishna was remembering Oh, at that time, after I left Vrindavan and went to Dwarka, after a long period of separation, I came to Kurukshetra. And then Gopis saw me for the first time after 50 years. Gopiyasya Krishna Utal Upalavya Chirada Vishtam Yat Prakshane Vishu Pachnakritam Shapanti. At that time, when they looked at me after not seeing me for 50 years, how did they see my beauty? I don't know. I want to know. So in this way, Krishna, he was remembering all of his pastimes. Hmm? Hmm? And how gopis, they would drink his beauty in various ways. He wanted to also drink his own beauty in various ways. Hmm? Oh, Radhika in separation from Krishna, she can weep. Gopakadamba nitam bhavati muka Bandhu Dvija Madhura Dara Pallava Ula Sita Smita Shobham How beautiful Krishna is when he goes to the forest of Vrindavan and meets with many many gopis and being very close to them and looking at their beautiful faces and his lips illuminated by the rays of the moon and he begins to smile and lean forward his face full of greed to kiss all oh, those gopis. Hmm? Radhika's thinking, how beautiful he looks at that time when he's meeting with even someone else. <laughs> the frame is so strong. Hmm? So Krishna says, what is this? How she relishes my sweetness in so many ways, I don't know. And what happiness she feels. Hmm? Krishna was remembering. When I meet with Radhika in Konjas of Vrindavan, afterwards, oh, she is very tired. Hmm? Perspiration, she cannot move, even one finger she cannot move. Hmm? And the happiness she feels in her heart, she completely forgets herself. Who am I, where am I, what am I? She cannot remember anything. Hmm? And Krishna looks and thinks, how happy she feels. I don't know. Hmm? The taste that she has in her heart, I don't know. But some fragrance is coming out. And when I take this fragrance, a greed comes. A greed comes to know how she feels, what is her happiness. So with these three types of greed, hmm, what is the pranaya of Radhika? And how she tastes my sweetness through this pranaya. And when she tastes my sweetness, what happiness she feels. Krishna wanted to know. So he appeared as Satyananda Kohari. And here, in this Gambira, taking assistance from Lalita and Vishaka, hearing the verses of Krishna Kanamritam, Gita Govinda, and Srimad Bhagavatam, the poetry of Chandidas and Vidyapati. Krishna, he realized something hmm, of this brain. So we are very fortunate to come to this place. And we give up pranam in the dust of the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. And we pray to them, please sprinkle your mercy. That, oh, not this Mahabhav. Not Radhika's Mahabhav that Mahaprabhu was tasting. Hmm? But only the Parag. That means one speck of pollen, fragrant pollen from the lotus of his heart. Huh? It may touch us so that we have the chance to enter into the service of lotus feet of Bishop Hanulandini. Hmm? Actually, without understanding someone's heart, cannot serve them. Hmm? It is quite impossible. 
So without the power of radical, just touch, coming into the heart of the devotee. They don't know the art, how to serve radical in such a way which is anuku. Anuku yena Krishna. Anushilena. Not Krishna. 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 Anuku yena Krishna. Anushilena. Favorable for Radhika's happiness. Hmm? And Krishna's happiness, or oh, Krishna will become running behind hmm? anyone who becomes Dasi of Radhika. Hmm? Radhika ara Dasi jadi hoya viman. Shikra Malaika Goku Khan. Krishna is included hmm? in the service of Radhika. Sri Gambira ki jai, Satyavadan Gohari ki jai, Tribhuvna Mangakkani Sri Hari Nam Sankirtana ki jai, Nitai Gaura Pramanande. Puyabad Maharaj explaining these things. Sila Bishana Chakravarti Thakur described who had only one more to see Radha and uh, Radha Govinda, Radha Madha. They worship by the sweetness mode and only they have STC mode, then they are coming in Golak Vrindavan, Brajdham. They can test radical mode. Otherwise, other persons, they cannot test this mode. Goswami says, <coughs> Guru Varga says, Jo Brahma Rudra Sukha Narad Bhishma Mukha Brahma Rudra Narad Bhishma Pita Mukha Jo Bhishma Rudra 